Hi guys, it's Hengist here from House of Hengist Comics and a big welcome back to the channel, Beansters. Batten down those hatches, it's a hot one today. Because yes, we're back in the Battle of Hanau, it's still only day one. And this is Half Track, part two, part of our Blitzkrieg series, episode 44, in the sub-series Blitzsteel. First the news though, and uh, today, while well, we're going to be returning to the action on the front line here at Hanau, in Belgium, this critical action for divisions of armor clashing. I want you to look basically at wargaming and what we're doing. Uh, what I thought I'd start with is in the military forward, uh, let's just look at this. I wish to reinvigorate wargaming in defense to restore it as part of our DNA. Historically, the UK military was accomplished at wargaming, but this culture has largely been lost. Where it exists, it is ad hoc and uncoordinated with demand outstripping existing uh, expertise. We must seek to regenerate this culture and the associated skills amongst our people, military and civilian alike, at all levels, in all areas of our business. So basically what they're saying here is, and I, I really feel strongly about this, Wargaming needs to come back to the fore. It is part of that military concept. As Muffling said, it wasn't a game, it's training for war. And so when we look at what exactly Wargaming is and how it differs from gaming, it does set certain criteria up. And part of that is to assess, to do as-ifs, to try and work out what you can learn from these battles. And this is a big part in the narrative wargaming approach that we've taken. It's got to feed back as well. An assessment is critical to understand more and set more questions. But a big shout out now to someone who was involved in this within the British Army, uh, a former British officer, Dave White, who has his own channel. And he needs support because frankly, the work he's doing is absolutely splendid. The big focus, of course, is the land war in Asia and also ultimately the relationship with China into the war as well, often completely ignored uh, in a wargaming context. But this is why we enjoy what we're doing with Akatol Panzer. It's not just about dice, it's what we can learn from it. And here's an example of what we do. We use a five-star rating uh, effectively to judge and evaluate the commander's performance. Not everyone can be a five-star commander, of course. But ultimately, there are five uh, areas that we look at. Doctrine, innovation, casualties, uh, execution and ultimately whether objectives have been secured and these are measured and really it is difficult to get stars I mean they're not something you can be awarded so the whole emphasis of the game for the players and, and the commanders is, is in that assessment and what we can learn from it and a big part of that is using the battle deck and that's critical to what we're doing creating all that friction of war Let's now turn our attention to what happened previously in the last episode and uh, you need to catch this up if you haven't seen it, uh, episode 43. And this is really uh, a quick overview of the battlescape. There are two towns in which the Germans are trying to take both with motorised infantry. Uh, there are preliminary Stuka attacks for three turns uh, to suppress the French and it's a great battle in which we see a lot of mobility and action. Uh, which takes place. Here's the German tactical plan. Uh, effectively, you've got Krayen on the right and Fisnes on the left. Uh, it, Krayen has now fallen due to a massive assault by a half-track and motorized infantry. And, and what we can also see is how the Germans are now switching their attack to move to, onto Fisnes. They need footholds in both towns. And, and the French armor, a big decision, has all turned up at Fisnes. Urban fighting, Loads going on, and we're going to return to the action now uh, in part two. Let's get back into the battle action, guys. The weather conditions are good, light rain is expected, and let's now look at the situation report, SIP rep at 1400 hours uh, here you can see the black the Germans and the blue the French and this is the position it will fight out in because really this is the battle for Thiersnes and we'll see the German uh, pioneers part of that uh, camp group which have already taken uh, the gun pit uh, their other platoon moving out around Crayon and they're digging in with that uh, second infantry company uh, preparing for any counter-attack the first German uh, heavy artillery starts pounding the front line of the Belgian position at Thiersnes, pouring in a lot of shot and there's a lot of explosions but few casualties as the pioneers move forward. They fought two actions as I've already said and they've got to go in and drive off this last platoon as Overwatch is called uh, against the uh, 
support weapons platoon annihilating both heavy machine guns. Battalion commander's uh, eyes roll at that one. And ultimately, the second platoon of Panzer Grenadiers now try and take that corner building, which was uh, heavily shelled in the last action. Moving in quickly, you can hear their hobnail boots scrape over the walls as tanks come round the corner and catch them, machine gunning three teams. Uh, the French have also moved a platoon of tanks up to support that the uh, French infantry. Shell fire is landing now by the French on the uh, German positions, really heavy and causing casualties and the ambulance is scrambled over there. And you can see the weight of German infantry moving forward and its armor. Uh, as more and more shells land into Thysnes, it's really heavy fire. The pioneers move forward against that platoon as shell fire explodes against the Belgians, killing several teams in that building. The second uh, company commander gets news as he's sort of taking photographs of his kills uh, and has to move his infantry out. He's got to go and support that attack on that hill and wood line. But what we now see is the uh, second Panzer um, Grenadier platoon uh, make an assault which is very successful and drives the Belgians out of that building. They've got a foothold now on two buildings but the French keep moving up and they have still got three platoons and they're not going to give up um, Thysnes without a fight. They're supported by tanks and armor and they, they effectively occupy the second and third lines of these buildings. We then get a card. Air support for the Germans and the um, ME-110s come in over rooftop level uh, and start firing. There's only one aircraft. She drops a bomb but uh, to no effect unfortunately and again jeers to the Luftwaffe. But uh, again, shell fire continues from the Germans. It's exploding everywhere. The medic, uh, in the meantime, is working overtime and they can uh, reanimate dead teams as long as the platoon is still active. And they were well used in this battle. And what you see is, as I said, the, uh, the weight of German uh, mechanized forces moving up. The, the uh, French basically holding the town, really with their tanks and infantry behind them. Uh, a lot of good machine gun platform profiles here as those Panzer Grenadiers charge again. They're moving headlong towards the, uh, the platoons and they get up into contact, but they're only rifle armed. And um, effectively, once again, uh, this sort of heroic French platoon drives off the, the, the assault as uh, more Panzer Grenadiers now try and get into the building. Um, effectively, the Panards have moved back and, and another platoon to the left flank. The AA machine gun platoon eventually is shot to pieces and obliterated by pack fire. And here you can just see the edge or the outer side of the west facing part of the town. Um, we get a, a fire shot from a Panard which hits an armoured car but that basically uh, puts out the fire and it hits another one and again we get a bailed fire result. Again that is suppressed. Amazing dice. And what we see is the, uh, the little tanks have come up, those Hotchkisses, a direct hit by French artillery blows a truck to pieces. And we see a French medic here reanimate a team, uh, which is, uh, again, so both sides are doing well. When another uh, ME-110 comes in over rooftop and opens fire with its cannons, uh, uh, basically trying to shoot the infantry up. Uh, fortunately, no casualties. But this uh, Panard and Hotchkiss line on the edge of the town is holding as, German, as French infantry try to flank and get round at those grenadiers outside of, using outside of the town. And here you can see the sort of gateway to the town. Uh, the door knockers are moving forward and the German commander said he wished he'd moved them forward earlier as the, uh, the grenadiers and their support weapons are moving their machine guns forward to pepper the buildings. Here's their support weapons platoon of three mortars. That is bringing down fire as well. And you can see from this shot, the Grenadiers once again moving up that slope to attack. They've unpinned. This time they've gone in with mortar support fire. And they charge in. And once more, the, uh, the French platoon basically puts them to the sword and drives them off once again. Uh, this time French artillery is now pounding those uh, terrible 75 mils which are re-rolling misses because of the quick fire roll causing a lot of casualties to anything in the open. Uh, artillery is landing everywhere now from both sides. The whole village is effectively uh, being shelled and buildings and plasters everywhere. Here we see the medic once more uh, trying to get those uh, poor teams that were destroyed and it reanimates one. As the Grenadiers move forward, supported by half-track fire, there's such a weight of fire 
um, but behind these French are tanks and light rain now occurs. Now that is going to affect visibility and also you can't basically uh, fire on um, spotters unless you're within 16 and they're now within 16 but they failed to range in. Much frustration once again from the Germans but their shell fire continues. Uh, it isn't causing any damage though uh, with the button up rule and the uh, French tanks continue to cause problems to the uh, the little armoured cars, the six rats. One door knocker, however, manages to sight a Hotchkiss, fires and hits her, blowing her to pieces with that 37mm shell. Um, we've also got now the second company who've had to race uh, over the uh, company commander having to put his, uh, his camera away and order his um, machine gun platoon to dismount. Now they get a fatigue card and decide they've got to get rid of this French platoon on the hill. They play it, but a reaction check's made and that is passed. And this time the, uh, the French basically open fire uh, with pretty much their last ammunition and again inflict casualties. This time breaking that pioneer platoon. Um, and there's a cheer that goes up from the French, but the um, second company's commander, he's got his infantry ready and supported by machine guns, he's gonna go in next and he's decided they've got to take this position and flank it, comes under mortar fire. Basically, um, that isn't successful and he's now moving forward. And then they get the low ammunition check card and again they throw that card on the poor French platoon which is so depleted with the tanks behind it. Um, and so it's on low ammunition now and uh, that's quite right. Well, meanwhile at Crayon, absolutely nothing. Someone comes out of the toilet and that's just about it. But in the meantime here, we've got the machine gun platoon trying to get into a position to fire. We've got uh, effectively the Grenadiers, um, the motor shirt now from second company, making a bold, bold assault. They go in and ultimately this is what happens. Terrible dice, and you can't blame the commander here. He'd done everything right, and it was just the way the dice were going. The French tosser, or adjutant, the guy that rolls the dice, was brilliant this day. And when you're fighting with these sort of tactics where you can move uh, in a cautious movement, you're trying to pin, pin down and suppress. Suppress basically means the defender cannot fire or counterattack and support. So the more pins you get on, uh, the more it is, is unlikely to respond but the artillery keeps landing. It's heavy, heavy duty artillery. Uh, casualties are sort of mounting. Uh, none of the vehicles seem to be being destroyed by the, uh, the artillery so far. They've, uh, they've been very lucky to avoid the fire. But creeping up into the town, a door knocker has got close and sees a French tank, which is an OP tank incidentally, fires, hits her, the 37 mil, thumps that and basically knocks her out. The ambulance makes another incredible recovery, but time's running out. And as that artillery comes in from the French now, which is shelling uh, the uh, Panzer Grenadiers, uh, one of their tanks is hit by um, a six rad and knocked out. Uh, and here's the position on that knoll. There's three teams left holding it. And uh, the shell fire again comes in, fails to range in on any French target. But they get smoke down and there's going to be a desperate assault by um, the uh, Panzer Grenadiers out against the command tank, the one I see. They rush into the smoke, past tank terror, go in, but are driven off, fail to hit as the tank basically counterattacks and drives them away. They're supported by more tanks in that town. The bastion is so strong here. And finally, in a desperate measure, the Germans launch out failed tank terror. They could have crept up and it's all over, guys. It's a French victory. And this was brilliant. Three stars to the French and Germans. So what can we say in postscript? Probably one of the best tactical performances I've seen from the Germans. They had terrible luck. I mean terrible luck. But they still played on and even with bad guys, managed to get a pretty um, a convincing, although they lost it, they got minor footholds in both towns, which we, I, I didn't think was going to occur. The French played a brilliant game, a uh, brilliant dice, and my God, that platoon on the hill, four attacks it sustained, uh, sorry, five, and um, it, it sort of finally bailed out with seven men. Ultimately coming soon, we've got Volhaven, and that is something that you ain't gonna wanna miss. And let's not forget, uh, here's something from the US um, military uh, about wargaming, and we need to bring that back to the fore. We also never need to forget the fallen 
So this is Blitzkrieg, guys.